Hello everyone, welcome to this calculus lesson. Today we're going to be understanding the limit from an algebraic approach. This is going to be a four video series for this section and I really want you guys to understand that your algebra skills are going to be tested in all these sections. So just be prepared for that and if you realize that you do need to brush up on some algebra skills as we get going, please reach out to me personally so I can provide those uh, assignments that might be beneficial to you. So let's get started. So we're given this function and we have it graphed over here on the right side right there. And um, we're going to do several things. First, we're going to find f of a using the equation. And then we're going to find the limit of f of x as x approaches a using just the graph like we learned about last time. So f of a using our equation, let's write this down. So if we want to find, so notice here a is right there. Let me write that there. So a is here. So a is right there. And so that's the value I'm going to be using in, uh, that we're going to be using for our function. So zero, two, and 10. So let's, um, let's use zero first. So one half, negative two. Sorry, I need to um, erase this. That's not a parenthesis. Negative two times zero plus four, absolute value, minus four. So we're going to evaluate all that. So negative two times zero is zero plus four, that's four. Four divided by two, it gets me two. And two minus four is going to get me negative two. Now let's look at it from the graph. So I'm looking here at a graph and f of a using the equation. So I'm looking at f approaching zero. So zero is right here and I wanna approach it from both the left side and from the right side. Well, right here, it looks like that y value that I tend to go to comes out to be negative two. So now let's move on to our next section. Limit of f of x as x approaches two from the right side. So again, I'm going to substitute two into my equation. So one half, absolute value, negative two times two plus four, close absolute value minus four. So negative two times two, that's negative four plus four, that gets me zero, absolute value zero is still zero, times half is zero, zero minus four gets me negative four. Now let's look at the graph again at two from the right side. So two, and I'm only following it from the right side, so right there. And the y value that it tends to go to is right here, and that looks to be equal to negative four. And then next we have the limit of f of x as x approaches 10. Okay, so let's think about this. Let's substitute in our value. So I have one half, absolute value, negative two times 10 plus four. Close that, minus four. All right, so negative 20 plus four, that gets me negative 16. Absolute value of negative 16 gets me positive 16. 16 divided by two is going to be eight. Eight minus four is equal to four. Positive four. Now let's kind of think about this from the graph because our graph does not go all the way over to 10. Um, so let's get the slope here and it looks like it just goes up one over one up one over one, up one over one. So the slope is just going to be um, just one as I keep moving over to the right. So it goes one, two, three, four, five, six. At six at zero, uh, the y value is zero. So if I go over to where x is 10, I go four more spaces to the right, but that means I also go four more spaces up somewhere like right around in that area. Uh, so four more spaces to the right, four more spaces up, and that's going to get me positive four. So I want you to take a look at, by substituting algebraically, we're also getting the exact same value as what we're looking at on the graph. So there's a connection between the function and the graph that we're looking at. So here is going to be a definition. When our function is defined and continuous at a value where x is equal to a, how can it be found, how can the limit be found analytically? So I'm going to rewrite it again. So provided that a function is continuous, So provided that a function is continuous at that value, at x equals to a, then well, what can we do? So then the limit, the limit of f of x as x approaches a is equal just to the function at a. So is equal to f of a. So all we have to do is substitute that value in, as you can see from our table where we're doing that right there. 
So now that we're looking at some of these problems, we're going to still continue to find just using that simple property of substituting those values in. So let's go ahead and do that first. Here I have the limit as x approaches three. So let's substitute three in. Three squared minus two times three plus three. And let's evaluate that. So three squared, that gets me nine. Nine over two right here. Minus two times three. Uh, so that's minus six plus three. So that's minus three. So nine halves minus three. So nine halves minus three. So that's uh, six halves. So I get equal to positive three over two, just by substituting it. Now we're gonna do it again. Substitute the value for three. So five times three plus two over two times three minus three. And let's evaluate that. So five times three is 15 plus two. I'm going to get 17. And then two times three is six minus three is three. So I have 17 thirds for B. And C, we got some square roots, but that's fine. And again, if you look at our, at our table, even though this is saying two from the left side, it's not really going to matter. We can still go through this in the same way just by substituting in that value. So now I get the square root of two plus two minus one over two plus one. So let's see, two plus two, that's four. Square root of four is gonna get me two. Two minus one in the numerator is gonna give me one. And then in the denominator, I have two plus one, which is three. So now in that one, we have one third. Now let's look into a trig problem. The limit as theta approaches pi over two, a sine of two theta. So let's look at this here. Sine of two times pi over two. So that's gonna get me sine of pi. And I think about the unit circle there. Sine of pi is equal to zero because sine is associated to the y values on the unit circle. Now over here, we have cosine of theta on theta. So the limit of theta, uh, or the limit of that function as theta approaches two pi over three. Substitute two pi in, two pi over three in. So cosine of two pi over three, all divided by two pi over three. So let's see what happens here. So cosine of two pi over three, let me think about that. So that's um, a one third, but it's over on the negative side. So I know it's going to be negative. And then a cosine, that's gonna be one half. So I have one half. Now it's gonna be divided by two pi over three, but I'm just going to multiply by the reciprocal. So times three over two pi. And let's see what I get here. So negative uh, three, so negative three over four pi. And that's gonna be our answer there. And now in this case, I have a logarithm in part F. So let's take this log here, substitute in, and we're gonna get log base eight of 11 minus nine. It's gonna be log base eight of two. So now I wanna think about, okay, eight to what power is gonna get me two? But eight to another power, like we need to decrease it. So we wanna be thinking of fractions. So fractions for our powers or radicals. So eight to the one third or the cube root of eight is getting me two. So this evaluates to one third. So that's going to be a quick introduction about how you can solve limits analytically just by doing some quick substitution. We're going to look into more different, more different methods in the coming video, so make sure you stay tuned for those. Remember, I'm Mr. Hernandez, and I'm always here to help. You.